there are approximately 300 million people who we anticipate having coverage in this country uh, at, um, in the near term. Uh, a large percentage of those individuals are already covered. Uh, they're either in employment-based coverage, they're in Medicare coverage, they're in Medicaid coverage, they're in TRICARE, they're in one of the many systems of insurance that exist in the country. There are a large number of people, frankly, who will be exempt. Uh, and the basis for their exemption could be on income, could be on their member of a tribal organization, could be on a, a host of uh, qualifications that essentially exempt them from this mandate. Uh, the latest estimates by the uh, Kaiser Family Foundation suggest that there are about 30 million people that we believe will be subject to the mandate, who essentially neither have incomes that are too low uh, or premiums that exceed essentially their capacity to finance them. So you're looking at a universe of about 30 million. Now, one of the critical questions in terms of the mandate, of course, is its importance to the success of the program going forward uh, and the risk, essentially, of the exchanges uh, and the other programs that are formed essentially not having an adequate number of people that are both healthy as well as unhealthy. And so one of the desires, of course, in the creation of the mandate was to essentially get people into the system so that you could essentially spread the risk and avoid some of the issues that have existed historically with essentially individual and small group coverage, which has been very costly because it tended to be, uh, really draw people that were most at risk. Well, one of the questions, of course, and the risk going forward in the exchanges is whether, in fact, only those people who are most at risk and essentially need coverage essentially decide to require themselves to essentially purchase that coverage. 